So this is an idea which comes from family therapy, and it's uh, called the Five Languages Appreciation for Management. It originally started with families, and saying there's five ways to show appreciation to the people that work for you. So then the managerial context, it's about people that work for you, and how do you say thank you to them, okay? So it started in families saying, as a parent, uh, a husband or wife, how do you show appreciation to your spouse and your children? So that's where it came from, but we've applied it, it's been applied to management. So I'll just go through the uh, five ways very briefly. So the first is words of appreciation. So you say, what a star. Really appreciate your comments in, in class, that was very helpful. So I'm showing appreciation by using words to say, you've done well, okay? So that's one. You tend to have one you prefer. I'll ask you about that in a minute, okay? So just plant that thought in your mind. Another one is quality time. Talk is cheap. What I want is quality time with you. I want to have a coffee and 20 minutes where you listen to me. Where it's not about words, me saying words, it's about me listening to you, okay? Now, I don't know if any of you are married, but it is often typical that, um, what I've learned over many years of marriage is that my wife wants to share her feelings. She doesn't want my advice. <laughs> now, I'm a man, I'm an MBA, I'm a manager, so generally it's problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution. So if someone comes with a problem, I would uh, give them a solution or lead them to a solution. Uh, she doesn't want this. So in fact, my wife, when she wants my advice, will say to me, what do you think I should do? It's very specifically, clearly asking for advice. Otherwise, I should, does that make sense? Any of you married probably understand that this is often dynamic where you really just want to share, you don't want any advice. What I want in quality time is for you to listen to me. Now sometimes uh, I will listen to my wife and she'll say, you're not listening. I will repeat word for word the last three paragraphs, what she said, showing with utter total truth that I was listening. This does not appear to be satisfying. <laughs> does this resonate with any of you? So I've learned to learn better, like an introvert, and listen better. So people like quality time, these people. So if you want to thank me and show your appreciation, listen to me and give me quality time one-on-one. -on -one. Another one, other people like acts of service. So with my secretary, when she's really busy, I'll say to her, boy, you've been working hard. I'll do this myself. So it's something that I have every right to ask her to do, but I'll say, I'll do it myself. So it's an act of service taking away from her that burden, okay? So that's an example of acts of service. Two more. One is gifts. So some people like small gifts. Now, it's not about the, the size of the gift. It's about the thought you were thinking about me while you're traveling. So my, I, I took a group of students to South Africa. We were on safari. So, you know, a great experience. And I bought a postcard sent it to my mother. The postcard, I got to see my mother months before the postcard actually showed up. But why she appreciate it? Because you were thinking about me when you were having a great time, you thought of your mother. Or, you know, you get a little gift and you take it back uh, to your family. So my kids like t-shirts, so I buy them t-shirts from around the world. Often the airport, because that's where they have them. It's also, I may have forgotten to do this, okay? <laughs> uh, and I've occasionally bought something in the Toronto airport flying from Europe, and then my wife goes, Oh, these are Canadian. And it's hard to explain your way out of that, but you know, at least, hey, at least I bought something. But the idea of a gift is saying, I appreciate you, what you're doing, and I bought you a small gift to show you I care. The final one, which comes from family uh, theory, is touch. Now, obviously, in the work context, you've got to be more careful. Um, women can do this much more easily, and that's fine, and, and we understand the reasons why. But what it is, is that um, even as a man, though, I can do things with other men, for example, How's your, your shoulder? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll punch a man, particularly young men, in the shoulder as a way of saying, hey, good job. <laughs> He's never going to sit in the aisle ever again. <laughs> it's funny, it was uh, one of the guys lives across the street, he's a young man, I taught him a couple times. He's like 24, plays hockey, giant. So I'm at an occasion with him, and I go up and I punch him in his shoulder, and he goes, ow! <laughs> He had hurt his shoulder, and then like 10 seconds later, his dad, who's my age, came up and punched him in the same shoulder. He goes, what's wrong with you old guys? <laughs> so, but it's something where you, you, know, you, can, you can punch someone, or you can go like that, or you can high five with a woman. Like that's, that's fine, that's not sexual, not even a microaggression. Okay, <laughs> so something where women have greater latitude, particularly other women. Though it's funny because in Montreal, I kiss women I know on both cheeks. 
Okay, so this is normal behavior, not of undergraduate students, but uh, women I know. Um, well, I will. I, the only time I would kiss an undergraduate student at graduation with her parents there, because now she's no longer a student, she's now an alumnus. And so alumni that I know, as women, I kiss on both cheeks, and they feel it's treating her like a peer. Now, it's funny because uh, Montreal, I can do that. When I go to Toronto, Occasionally, there's women I know I've known for a while, and I'll, go, I'll kiss them, and you can feel them stiffening up and thinking, lawsuit. <laughs> in Ottawa, you just never know, because it's French and English, so you just, you know, it's utterly confusing. Ottawa is confusing, I think we can agree on that. But in Montreal, it's fine to kiss uh, women both cheeks. And so it's, that touch is more of a Quebec thing in a way, and we hug more. If you're Italian, you tend to hug more, I think, most Italians. I notice among uh, Arab men, that they like to get too close to me when they're talking. <laughs> and so I've seen this where I've danced around rooms with Arab men very slowly. They get too close, and at a reptilian level, I go, he's too close. <laughs> so I'll move back, but I don't, I'm not, I'll just move back a little bit, and he goes, he's too far, and he'll move closer. <laughs> and we're just kind of, you know, slowly moving around the room. Does this make sense? So something where it's a cultural thing to some degree. 